Welcome, welcome all of my happy Crumpin' War Gamers. I am your host, Jonathan Arkin, and today we are going to talk about how to deploy. Deployment is so freaking important for the game of Warhammer 40,000, and if you don't understand how to do this, it will be a very challenging time mastering the tactics of this game. Before we get started, please, if you appreciate these videos, and even if you don't appreciate these videos, just hit the like, hit the subscribe button, and if you wouldn't really mind, I would love it if you would share this video to your friends so that your uh, all of your casual gamer friends or your other competitive gamer friends can also enjoy increasing their mastery of the game of Warhammer 40k. So let us jump right into it. Deployment. This is going to be one of the two most important phases of the entire game. Combine it with your movement phase. These are the two phases where you actually have total control over what you do. Remember, in the shooting, the psychic phase, and the fight phase, you're always going to have dice affecting your decisions. So in the shooting phase, you might think, oh, well, I get to choose who shoots what, but you might choose one unit to shoot a critical target, and the dice just screw you. So then suddenly you have to choose another unit to also shoot, and it's it can really screw up your voluntary choices. So the two phases that you have complete control and ma uh, mastery over is going to be your deployment and your movement phase. So this is where we have to be absolutely on point. Um, there's, there we go. So we are going to win and lose in these two maps. So there's a couple different types of deployment. First off, you've got the passive deployment. This is not bad. Passive, defensive. You know, I'm actually going to rename this defensive because I think defensive is better than passive. Um, defensive definitely works a lot better. Then this is going to be like you're facing the gun line and you're like, oh, crap. If they go first, I just die. So, so you can't. You have to deploy defensively where your enemy can't see you, where it's going to be hard for them to draw lines of sight on you, etc. Then you've got the mixed, which is like, okay, I'm hidden on this flank, while on this flank I can be aggressive on. And then you have the aggressive deployment. Aggressive deployment doesn't necessarily mean YOLO deployment, <laughs> although that is a strategy. A strategy. Uh, aggressive just means you're putting your guys in position to take advantage of whether you're an alpha strike army or you're a shooting army and you know your opponent can't get to you turn one. So you're going to put on the line so that you can get all the angles you need. And each one of these deployments is perfectly valid. It just changes based off of what you are playing as and what you're playing against. So there's a few very important critical questions we have to ask ourselves when we are deploying. The first one of these is going to be what type of terrain do we have? Are we playing on GW open terrain? Are we playing on WTC terrain? Are we playing on UKTC terrain? Uh, you can even be doing, you know, player place terrain. Player place terrain will really change things uh, very dramatically. Then the next question we want to ask is, what is the distance of deployment? So are we on, say, a conversion style deployment where we have very, very little space in between us and other people? Or are we going to be on a Recover the Relic style deployment where there's this huge deployment zone in between uh, us and our opponent? Because that'll change um, whether you think you can get into combat in turn one or turn two or whatever. Then we look at what enemy are you playing against? Are, are they a heavy shooting army? Are they an alpha strike army? Or are they an army that just really has to stage themselves to have an effective turn two? Then lastly, what army are you <laughs> playing with? Are you the heavy shooting? Are you the melee? Are you the alpha? Because the types of different matchups that you have will basically depend on how you're going to deploy. Then there's a few other little things that we have to talk about before we get into the nitty gritty of how to actually place a deployment. What are the keys to controlling deployment? The first key is going to be determining who deploys first or second. Typically speaking, it's better for you if you can get your opponent to deploy first because that's going to give you the ability to counter deploy them. This is not always true. For example, if you're playing Gene Stealer Cults, don't even try it. They're always going to win the deployment because you're never going to know who anyone is. But if you if you have infiltrators, remember, and remember, infiltrators are people who can deploy in no man's land. The rules typically always that they have to be nine inches away from the enemy deployment zone or nine inches away from enemy units. And that's going to be very important because if I have a unit of infiltrators and my opponent has a unit of infiltrators, he can put his unit of infiltrators in a position on the board that can block my entire army. Or he can put his infiltrators where I wanted to put mine, and then suddenly I have to put my infiltrators nine inches away from him. So if we both have infiltrators, you want to deploy first. Because that way you could put your infiltrators in a position as such that will keep your opponent from being able to put his infiltrators in a position that's going to be very annoying to you. 
all right? I know that was a lot of words saying infiltrators, but that's just the way it works. If only one of you has infiltrators, it really doesn't matter that much. Um, it's generally better to get extra, extra knowledge. So then you have to think about units with pre-game moves. Now, units with pre-game moves have a lot of effect. Because let's take World Eaters, for example. World Eaters can have that 11-inch pre-game move with a very dangerous melee unit, which can guarantee them a, a first-turn a first charge, essentially. So how do you affect that? Well, sometimes you can use infiltrators to kind of block that. <laughs> so your infiltrators can block those pre-game moves. And I did an entire video on the move blocking. I'm not going to go super deep in depth on that. You guys can always we'll go watch that uh, video later. Then you have to talk about redeploys. Some armies have the ability to redeploy certain units after all the entire deployment phase is done. Uh, some There's like one or two armies out there who have to redeploy before you determine who goes first, but everyone else will redeploy after you determine who goes first. And this is really, really important because if you're going against an army who has a bunch of redeploys and they're super defensive, remember, if they get first turn, all they have to do is just redeploy to be super aggressive, and then you can be really, really screwed. So you have to remember redeploys. And then there's going to be a few mission-specific challenges, such as abandoned sanctuaries, where you cannot infiltrate, you cannot pregame move. And that means you can't have any things in no man's land before the game starts. And then lastly, the thing that you have to consider is, do we have those first turn teleports or first turn deep strikes we have to concern ourselves about? For the orcs, you have the teleport spell. For the Thousand Suns, they can teleport. For basically any marine, they can do drop pods in, in turn one. Um, I think Eldar can do... Falcon grav takes in turn one. So these are other things that you have to consider. Like, do you have to screen your backfield for a enemy alpha strike from deep strike? All right. So these are the general rules that we're going to have to look at when we're playing on a medium to dense terrain layout. This is going to be your typically your WTC style terrains, maybe sometimes player plays. If you're playing against a melee army, typically speaking, you're going to be aggressive with your deployment because they're not going to be shooting you turn one with anything that's super significant. However, you need to pre-measure just to make sure you're not opening yourself up to those turn one charges. If you're playing against a shooting army, so say you're playing against the Iron Hands, you need to be defensive because if Iron Hands is going first, what they're going to do is they're going to get these little annoying stupid angles where they're going to be able to blast you with a stupid amount of firepower and you're just going to get screwed. Now, when I say defensive, that doesn't mean passive, which is why I renamed it at the beginning of this little lecture here. Defensive puts you in a position where you can still get to where you need to go. It's just maybe a little bit less movement than you would if you were deployed aggressively. And then we're going to have the Alpha Strike Army. So if you're playing against an Alpha Strike Army, you have to have a positioning because they're going to get to you turn one if they want to, if they go first. So you have to have your units in position. But the best way to handle that Alpha streak Strike is to screen with units that you don't care about dying. So for example, I play orcs a lot. I might screen with some of my Gretchen. So if I'm playing world eaters, then the world eaters are going to be moving forward to kill my kill rig, but there's going to be a unit of 40 point Gretchen in front of them. So they're going to waste themselves on killing Gretchen. So it's no, that's, I don't really care about that. So I'm going to switch the TTS view right now. I'm going to show you what I'm talking about. Okay. All right. Through the magic of TTS, very excitingly, uh, Aha, uh -huh. now we're on TTS view. <laughs> so through the magic of TTS view, what we're looking at here is I've done a distance deployment here. Um, this is a medium to dense terrain. Um, so WTC, we would call this medium to dense terrain. This actually, I think, would be considered dense. So I have the orcs who are a aggressive melee army playing against a very shooty uh, custodes army. Okay, so the... Adeptus Custodes have these Caladius Grabbed ED tanks that are going to be blasting with a massive amount of firepower that's just going to wither my ranks. The Sagittarium are going to slaughter, slaughter any um, infantry. Then we've got a big unit of Custodian bikes here. And they're deployed a little defensively, but remember the Custodians are going to have two redeploys after they finish deployment. Okay, What the Orcs have done here is they have taken advantage of all of this really nice terrain. So it doesn't really matter where the Custodes player moves on turn one. The Caladius Gravity Tank cannot move up here to try to get a beat on the Gretchen because the commandos are in position to block them. Um, same thing over here. They're not going to get any angles because the commandos are here to block the Gravity Tanks. This t one gra Caladius Gravity Tank could move his 14 inches to be right here and maybe draw a line against the Battle Wagon. Let's just see if we can actually make that happen.
So like something like this. And then he could see the battle wagon and shoot the battle wagon or see the um, kill rig and shoot him. But at that point, me as the orc player, I'm happy. I don't care because that just means that, okay, he'll shoot me. He won't kill me with one tank. And then I'm going to crush him in my next turn. It basically gives me a free charge. So uh, I don't care about this. And, that's, and the and the Custodius player here would certainly never uh, do that move because it would just be giving away a free tank. All right, so the Custodia player here is in a really good position because right now what they can do is they can absolutely um, have two redeploys. So let's say the Ort player goes second and the Custodians go first. Well, all the Custodians have to do is... Really, they're actually in quite a good position. They might maybe put the Dreadnought over here so the Dreadnought will go and kill these Commandos. And maybe they'll take these bikes... And they'll put them a little bit closer. Because now that they've redeployed and the custodians have gone first, now they can take these bikes and they can just do like this and like this and like this or something. And then they're going to get to move their 14 inches turn one. So that they can stage right about here. And this is actually a fairly dangerous place to have them staged. Because when they're right here, now the bikes can all shoot the battle wagon. And the bikes can kill the battle wagon. So this is a much more dangerous deployment. And they're still too far away to reliably get a lot of really good charges into the bikes. Um, maybe we would even have them backed up just a little bit more. So here the beast boss could go 10 inches. And he can try to charge. But it's going to be a 10 inch charge. Or maybe a, maybe a 9 inch charge. Because he's going to be minus 2 for these forests here. So it's not really a great time for me to waste my wah as an orc player but it is a good position for the bikes to be able to shoot maybe they can get struck back a little bit but if the orc player wants to use his wah just to kill this one unit of bikes that's great for the custodes player so the custodes player can then just wipe so this is a really good balanced deployment the orcs have a really good advantage here as well so let's say they go first it's very simple what's going to happen is the commandos get to move on up doo -doo -doo. and they can probably honestly just kind of move out like this. And they might honestly not even charge. They might just come up here, turn six, move six inches, and just hold the objectives. So now what happens is the custodian player, when he goes second, he's not really going to be able to move out of his deployment zone. So we can just even stream like this. So now the custodian player is actually in trouble because the Dreadnought can't get out. He can't move Trajan Valoris anywhere really importantly, which means the Ort player is going to have the freedom to move wherever he wants without being worried. We can take the kill rig. We can move him to about right here. And then right here, it's still going to be very, very challenging for the um, custodian players to really shoot him with anything meaningful. So this Cladius tank won't be able to shoot. This one maybe. So what you can see here is this is a very balanced deployment based off of the lines that are available to us. And uh, I think this is a good example where both armies should be fairly satisfied with the way they deployed, but they don't have a good advantage over the other. The orcs could deploy very stupidly here. Let me show you what a stupid deployment is. I could put a kill rig like this. I could put a battle wagon right there. Oh, by the way, all my characters here are totally safe because they're lookout served by the battle wagon. And the commandos are closer, so it doesn't matter that my that my characters are out in the open. If the orc player had deployed like this, which would be maximum, like, hey, let's just go yellow, go as fast as we can. It's going to be very, very simple and easy for the custodian player to get all of his really good shooting to shoot right into that kill rig and kill the kill rig or to the battle wagon kill the battle wagon. So this would be an example of a stupid deployment for the orcs, whereas previously we had a quite intelligent uh, deployment. Because the only thing that could happen is the custodian player could, if they go first, could choose to put his four bikes here and try to kill the battle wagon with four bikes, which is not which is not a guaranteed kill, but it's possible. But it's also a trade that the work player would be willing to make to then be able to come clean up the bikes. So that is a great balanced deployment. So let's go back to the PowerPoint real fast, and we're going to talk about what happens when we're on lighter terrain. So um, do -do -do, through the magic of, there we go. Now we're on the PowerPoint. Okay, so this is going to be rules for light terrain. When you're playing against a melee army, what you really need to focus on is getting position and setting up your counter charges. Um, you want to set up your your unit that's going to be very good for overwatch. So if they're going to charge in, then you need to, the, the good overwatch unit that's ready to handle the charge in. When you're playing against a shooting army on lighter terrain, 
this might be the time for actual YOLO deployment. And what do I mean by YOLO deployment? I mean putting everything on the line, getting ready to go completely forward if you are a melee army or an alpha strike army. If you're a shooting army, maybe you can try to play like outside of their ranges. But if you're like a melee or a uh, alpha strike army, you just got to go full send. Uh, hopefully you can survive the first turn round if they go first. Hopefully you can get into them if you go first. <laughs> and uh, But that's that's just the game of Warhammer 40k on light terrain, which is why I, I basically only use WTC terrain because I think it's the most fair and balanced terrain in the game. Then if you're playing against an alpha strike army, you might want to play fairly defensively. Because if you play a little bit backwards, that might make it so that their alpha strike potential is very challenging. So you might not want to play a deploy on the line. You might just deploy passively backwards, then allowing you to annihilate anything that they will uh, step out into the open on their turn. Um, and I'm going to show you the king of the alpha strike, which is probably the world eaters. I'm going to show you how to handle them with a non-shooting army, actually. So I'm going to go back to the TTS, and let me just load up a different map for us here that I have saved. Do, do, do. Oh no, my autosave changed. All right, just bear with me real fast and I'm just gonna load up a different type of map. All we got to do is load up this. Sorry about this guys, I had this saved and it just kind of got overridden because I was a silly boy. So what I'm going to be setting up for you right now is I'm absolutely setting up a, how would you do a deployment for say world eaters versus the orcs? Cause the world eaters are basically the undisputed Kings of messing you up in turn one. Let me just load in some out some world eater units. And then I'm going to load in some orc units. All right. So, we are on GW open terrain. So what you can see from here is there's massive firing lanes everywhere. So this is going to be a huge firing lane where just anything can see, shoot anything. This is going to be a huge, good firing lane. This is going to be a good firing lane. This is a very easy firing lane to draw. Oh no, my mouse is messed up to draw line of sight from right here. And likewise, line of sights are right here. So it's very easy to just get shot to death on this map. So let's put ourselves on a fairly different uh, deployment than what we had on the last one. Cause the last one we are doing to recover the relics. So let's do a tide of conviction here. All right. Tide of conviction. So the first things first, I have to, I'm going to have infiltrators for the orcs team and the world eaters will not have infiltrators. So what do I want? I want the world eaters to deploy first because the world eaters are going to do something very similar to this. They're going to have a land reader here. Then it's going to be full of Chaos Terminators. And then they're going to have a big old unit of 8-bound. And then they're going to have another big old unit of 8-bound right about here. Because what's going to happen with the 8-bound is these guys are going to have a roughly 11-inch pregame move. Because they're going to be right next to their general, who is going to make sure that it's very, very easy to see them. And he doesn't have to worry about me shooting, so he can even deploy while he can be seen because he knows I'm a melee army. So he's going to have his Lord Avocado, Lord Invocatus here, who's going to give them plus two inches to move and an 11 inch pregame move. So what do I as the Orc player have to be worried about? When the World Eater player moves, he's going to start the movement and he's going to go 11 inches pregame because he has a pregame move, which you would have known if you had asked them if they have pregame moves, which you're definitely going to ask. And then in their movement phase, they're going to move 11 inches, which is going to give them a basically super free, easy charge into our deployment zone. So what do I, as the orc player, want to do? Well, I want to make sure that I make this charge either impossible or just not enticing. So what I can do is I can put all of my vital units down. So let's say I put a kill rate down right here, and I can just block him with Gretchen. And this is very, very annoying because suddenly when I put a bunch of Gretchen in front of my kill rig, why would he waste time coming all the way over here, moving his roughly 22 inches? Oh, I pressed the wrong button. Sorry about that, guys. He can move his 22 inches and he could, he could kill my kill rig if he could get into it. 
but he can't get into the kill rig now. Now he's going to have to waste all that movement and that charge to kill a 40 point unit of Gretchen. And then my kill rig is just going to slaughter it next turn. So it would be a waste of his pregame move. Do you guys see how important that is? That's really, really critical. So be very, very cautious when if you're if you're playing an Alpha Strike army like World Eaters. It's super good to be able to get into the enemy turn one, but it's also very easy to counter your maneuver. All I had to do was put one 40 point unit right here. Okay, fine. Your possessed will kill that one 40 point unit, and then uh, I'm gonna kill your like 180 point unit very easily afterwards, and you'll get it's it's not a good trade for you. So that's how you handle people with our these really big pregame moves. Also, if you wanted to move block them, you could use your infiltrators to come on in, and you could physically move block them. Now, world eaters are a little bit better than other armies are at uh, these pregame moves because they can end their pregame move within nine inches of you, but they still can't physically move through your models. So even with 22 inches, what are they going to do? Spend, the ele spend an 11 inch move, bringing them all the way over here. And then spend another 11 inch move coming like right there and then not guaranteeing the charge it's silly they won't do it so you can fairly easily counter alpha strike armies especially on these open maps right especially if you have infiltrators which is why i think every single army in the game needs infiltrators so if we do it like that we can also very easily put our battle wagon right down and we can very easily put our main characters right here we can actually have our storm boys inside the battle wagon because when the storm boys go inside the battle wagon Remember, they get out within three inches. So I could actually have my Storm Boys, uh, let's say I call a wall and let them advance a charge. They can move 21 inches from the Battle Wagon and then get a free charge against him. Do you see how this works? Because both of these are Alpha Strike armies and both of these are melee armies. But the Orcs here have a huge advantage because they could just use their Infiltrators to completely screen any of those pregame moves to make it very challenging for the World Eaters unit to actually and take advantage of any of their rules basically so if you have infiltrators you can easily handle these alpha strike armies and it's really nice when you have infiltrators and you yourself are also an alpha strike army so i would deploy something like this you could always have the knobs inside the battle wagon boo, 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 boo. sorry about this guys i had this all made up before but you know say lovey so this is a really nice way to deploy on the line uh, for two melee armies, if it's a uh, going to be a, what, what do you call, melee on melee army. Now, it gets a little more challenging when you go for a shooting versus shooting. Let me show you what a shooting, uh, what a shooting versus melee looks like. Let's say this guy's a lunatic and he's taken three massive Lord Corn of, Corn Lord of Skulls. These Corn Lord of Skulls actually shoot like crazy. They're going to have like 16 damage, three strength, eight shots each. And at this point, if they go first, uh, come on. If they go first, they can kill both my kill rig and my battle wagon and everything that's inside of it, which is not good for me. So how would I deploy against this army? Well, you can't deploy here because then you'll never get to him. So really, honestly, in this position, you I kind of hate to say it, but I, I sometimes recommend just doing a YOLO. I go completely on the line and I'm like, okay, cool. I am going to... Not have my Gretchen covering my kill rig. Instead, I'm just going to have everything as close to the line as is physically possible. And I'm going to try to get everything into combat. So maybe here the battle wagon comes over here and the kill rig goes right here. So the kill rig's going to move his 13 inches. And then he's going to advance for an extra whatever. So he's going to end up like right about here to get that first turn charge. Because in this situation, he's got so much shooting that... And I can't hide anything on this uh, this terrain anyway that he's going to win if he goes first. So I might as well just go all on the line and hope I go first, which means that I can win. Um, it's not the way I like to play the game, but it is kind of the way to play the game sometimes. Um, if I was playing as Iron Hands instead of the Orcs here, different story. You don't have to YOLO because you have a shooting army and you can hide them here, you can hide them here. There's tons of hiding. And then in your turn, you just walk out and blast him to death. So it changes based off of who you're playing. But those are the those are the general rules uh, of how to deploy on light terrain versus heavy terrain. So when I'm playing on my light terrain against shooting armies, and you're a melee army, you might yellow. If you're a shooting army against a shooting army, you just stay defensive. And if they go first, it doesn't matter. If you go first, then they're probably going to be defensive, and you're going to try to move up onto firing them. That's the keys to doing your deployments, guys. Remember, if you're 
if neither one of you has infiltrators, then you all basically always want them to deploy first because that's just going to give you more information of how to counter deploy. And then if your army is including infiltrators, and so are they, you want to go first so that you can use your infiltrators to screen their infiltrators. And it's very, very important, guys. Okay, so that is how to deploy. I really hope you guys enjoyed this. Um, maybe I'll do some more videos where I can do a little more in-depth on certain um, deployments as well. But that's essentially the rules. You got your defensive, your aggressive, uh, your mixed, and then you also got a yellow type deployment. You get to control your deployment with your infiltrators and your pregame movers. And you have to deploy differently based off of the type of army that you are playing against. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. Please like, comment, subscribe, and I will see you in the next video, everyone. I am out. Until then, happy crumping wargaming.